The Old Shelters by Thomas Ligotti They used to be everywhere. Some of them were small and some were massive. If you wanted to take a walk, you could go to one of them. They saved you from just having to wander about pointlessly. You had a destination any time you needed one. You could stride down streets with a gaze of purpose, not slouch as if you were nobody with nowhere to be and no one who was waiting for you. That was just one of their many gifts to you. Whenever the mood moved you, their doors were open and you were welcome. Even on holidays their lights were on. When every other operation was locked up and dark on some disgusting national holiday or some idiotic day of religious observance, they defied custom and laughed in the face of tradition. They were sanctuaries that were not sacred, sterile and calming. You could have all the privacy you wanted. That was a certainty, their promise to you. Of course, there were some hours when they needed to shut you out for a time so they could keep themselves in good order, clean out the stables in a manner of speaking. But you only had to wait a short time before activity was resumed and all was back to normal. That was not too much to sacrifice for the endowments they showered upon anyone, regardless of how well-dressed or how ugly their visitors. They knew why people entered their sheltering spaces. They made no demands or asked you why you came. You were immune from being bothered and could either stroll about or simply stand and stare wherever you liked. It was amazing how accommodating they were. Really, there was nothing like them in the world. In a crucial way, they were like hospitals, except one did not have to be in pain or on the brink of death as a ticket for entry. But if you did collapse on the floor of some chronic malady or an acute attack of a disease you did not realize afflicted you, they would call for help. Care for the ill was not their purpose. They moved to act merely because it was the thing to do. Obviously, the latter motive was more dependable, since passion is such a fickle thing and may work against your most dire requirements if you are not a member of the groups with certain interests and allegiances. Passion, hope, salvation, these had nothing to do with these asylums. You could leave empty incentives of that sort out in the street with the rest of the fraudulence and uselessness of creation. During the time you spent within the walls of a preferred or chance locale of the kind in question, you were liberated from nonsense and lies. What more could one ask of an establishment? Once they were ubiquitous. I have already praised them for the nameless energy that made them so. Yet they had hardly existed for very long before every one of them disappeared. One day they were simply gone. Like everything that seemed would go on forever, they perished, and nothing else took over that supplied similar advantages. It was an outrage. It was a defilement of world historical proportions. But like all defilements, this singular scandal was accepted by the stupid mass of those who crowd the earth. It was a matter of survival that most scandalous of justifications for the barely tolerable goings-on that occur everywhere and at every minute of day and night. There was no respite and no escape from them. No haven now abides for me and others like me from the sickness of existence. Not a single memorial or burying ground has been allowed that might be frequented in place of the old shelters. What good is anything without them? I miss them so much.